viruses. These microscopic beings can make you really sick. Find out what makes something so small so dangerous. Hello class, today we're going to talk about viruses. So viruses are these weird non-living particles um, and they kind of just exist in your environment everywhere and they Viruses are basically little globs of chemicals that use other organisms to make copies of themselves. Viruses exist everywhere. Scientists think the number of viruses on Earth are about 10 to the 31st power. That's 10 followed by 31 zeros. That's a lot of viruses. And because viruses have been around for a long time, they've made a lot of people sick. Scientists have found evidence of virus-caused illnesses in the mummies of ancient Egypt. A flu pandemic in 1918 to 1920 infected about a third of all the people on Earth and killed 20 to 50 million people. A new virus showed up in late 2019 or early 2020 called Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2. It causes the disease COVID-19. On its own, a virus is not alive, like you and I are. It's a tiny microbe. They're too small to be seen with a naked eye. For example, the polio virus is about 10,000 times smaller than a grain of salt. Viruses weren't identified until 1892, and they weren't actually seen until 1931, when the electron microscope was invented. Inside a virus, you see genetic material designed to help the virus reproduce. It has an outer protein shell, or capsid, and then protein spikes, or outcroppings. Some viruses have a greasy outer coating called an envelope that's made up of the shreds of the membranes of the last cells they infected. Viruses can hang around for years until the right host comes along. A host is a plant or animal, a living thing. Viruses invade the host in different ways. Some travel through the air into the eyes, nose, and mouth. Others are transferred through body fluids or breaks in the skin. You can also get a virus from a mosquito or other bug bites. Once inside the host body, a virus uses those special spikes on its outer shell to attach itself to the receptors on a cell wall. It then attacks the cell, burrowing inside, and uses that cell to make copies of itself. The original host cell generally dies, and the multiplying virus seeks out new cells to attack, and that can make you sick. But your body doesn't take this attack lying down. When a virus enters the body, special cells in the bloodstream identify the invader and alerts the body's immune system. Your body then creates antibodies, chemicals designed to recognize the specific protein coating of the invading virus. Those antibodies attack the virus. A fever is one sign that your body is fighting off an infection. Your body then keeps a kind of protein record of invading viruses, so if one ever attacks you again, your defenses are all ready to fight. That's called immunity. You can also get protection from a virus with a vaccination. That's a shot containing a version of the bad bug that can't make you sick. That shot teaches your immune system to be ready to protect your body from an invading virus. Most of us have been vaccinated against a number of diseases that once killed thousands. We've even eliminated one disease from the earth, that's smallpox. Polio, a disease that can paralyze or kill its victims, is next for elimination thanks to a worldwide effort by groups like Rotary International. But we can't stop all viruses. Viruses are constantly changing their protein coding. That's called mutating. And each time a virus mutates, you have to develop new antibodies to fight it. And once you get sick from a virus, there isn't much a doctor can do except treat the symptoms. Your body's immune system has to do the work to get you well. That's why it's important to prevent viruses from spreading in the first place. Be sure to cover your mouth or nose when you sneeze or cough. Hey, and remember that greasy coating on some viruses? Well, washing your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds is a good way to kill viruses. So wash your hands frequently, especially after going to the bathroom or before eating, and keep your immunizations up to date. And if you're sick, stay away from others until you're feeling better to reduce the spread of the disease. When a particular virus spreads enough, health authorities can ask people to physically distance themselves. This video from the Ohio Health Department shows that when we're all crowded together, a virus can spread rapidly. If we maintain distance, the virus has a harder time spreading. You may also be asked to wear a mask over your nose and mouth, because with many viruses, you may not know that you're infectious before you get sick. 
So simple steps like washing your hands, staying home when you're sick, wearing masks, and following spacing suggestions are important. They may keep you and others healthy and keep the viruses away. Extra envelope protective coating um, to keep them nice and safe. Students, are you paying attention? Lydia, can you tell me one thing that you've learned about viruses? Washing your hands with soap and water can help kill viruses and, to, and help to keep you from getting sick. That's right. What's happening? If you want to learn more, head to the Science Trek website. You'll find facts, links, games, material for educators and parents, and much more. You'll find it all at sciencetrek.org.